it because I've never done it before. Um, but yeah, let's see how we go. It's pretty cool out here though, it's pretty busy. A few weeks ago, I met Carlo Brian, a fellow photographer and YouTuber from Australia who recently visited Japan. We went out to shoot some street photos, which is something I'm quite used to because street photography is the type of photography I've been doing the most over the past few years. But Carlo, on the other end, is an awesome portrait, wedding, landscape photographer, but shooting street is not something he's really used to. So he wanted to give it a try while in Japan and we decided to meet up in Osaka and we went out to shoot in this area called Shinsekai. Lately I've been trying to do some uh, reflection and more abstract kind of thing. Yeah. So it's all Today I was shooting with a 35mm prime, the Sigma 1.4 DGDN. Carlo decided to go for an 85 and I think it will be quite interesting to compare both perspectives as the two of us were shooting in the same area at the same time of the day but just with two different focal lengths. Right here is nice. My favorite prime lens as of today is still probably the 85mm. I really love the unique perspective you get on the streets while shooting with such a long lens. But recently I've been setting it aside a little bit to shoot more with wider focal lengths just like the 35mm or 28 My motivation to do so is to have more in the frame which make you have to work more and to be more thoughtful about your compositions if you don't want your images to look like a complete mess. Regarding the Sigma, it's an awesome lens. It's pretty much comparable to what a G Master can deliver in terms of performance but for almost half of the price but being a 1.4 it's quite big and heavy which is not really a problem when shooting portraits or some wedding shots too I guess but when it comes to street 1.4 can give you this good subject separation with this creamy bokeh however as someone trying to incorporate more layers into my street photography by shooting higher aperture, it would be probably wiser to shoot with a smaller and lighter 35 prime. One opening maybe at 2.8, so you actually cannot decide to go for the easy choice of blurring everything with the bokeh. During this session, I shot mainly people, and there are definitely some interesting characters around Shinsekai, some simple frames with beautiful light, and also some texture and smaller details. As mentioned before, Carlo decided to go for 85 prime, and I believe it's a wise choice for the ones new to street photography. Walking around and taking pictures with people or even of people can be pretty daunting for the one just new to this craft. Being able to incorporate some human subjects without having to be super close is quite helpful and easier in a way. That leads me to what I'm seeing a lot recently on YouTube. 85 mm is now getting more and more popular for street photography. And some people are saying that it's probably too much of an easy choice, mostly for two reasons. One is what I just said, you don't need to get really close to people which will result in less or no risk of being confronted. The second reason is related to the physical characteristics of an 85 prime. Such a long focal length gives you a lot of compression and most of these primes are opening at 1.8 which creates crazy bokeh. Those two things in combination have the potential of cancelling out a big part of your frame 
because of that going for 85 or even longer focal lengths is considered as the easy choice by a lot of people and for the most part I agree and resonate with that opinion and I'm saying that as someone who loves shooting with an 85 prime. That being said it doesn't mean that you should forget about it and sell your 85 if you already have one. Let's try to get something clean here. Got this. There's two. Oh, that's two nice. yeah, I love it. Love it with the light shadow. That's yeah. it. Just like any other focal lens, it has its unique perspective and compression. If you were to zoom with your feet, as we often say, to have a similar field of view when shooting with a 35, for example, the final results will never be the same. The compression is very different and you simply cannot get the same feel with a wider focal length. If used wisely and not always wide open, you can get some awesome results, for sure when taking photos of people, but there is also so much potential for more abstract kind of composition, playing with colors and texture. Motivation and peace of mind you get with an 85 is also a reason why I would always recommend anyone choosing this lens. I went through it myself when I started the street photography. I am more of an introvert type of person and the idea of being close or even ask people for pictures in the streets is something I was very uncomfortable with. At the same time, I wanted to take some candid portraits and being able to do it at a longer distance get me excited and motivated to shoot more. That resulted in me going out more often, which is absolutely essential to make progress. Nothing better than practice, practice and practice right. Yeah, this is the one. And for the more shy photographers like me, after a lot of shooting at 85mm, we can get more confident and decide to move down to wider focal lengths like 35-28mm if we want to try it. Carlo is very much not a shy person at all and very outgoing. Even for a first time I think he would have done a great job with a wider focal length. But the 85 really made him excited about shooting streets and he has been shooting more of it since then. Which is precisely the desired result. Going out to shoot more often and enjoy the ride. Waiting 
for a cool subject. Thanks a lot for watching, I hope you liked the video and go check Carlo's work on Instagram and YouTube. I look forward to your feedbacks as always and let's catch up in the next one, bye!